In this video, we're going to talk about the oxymercuration demercuration reaction. So consider this particular alkene. We're going to react it with mercuric acetate with water. And in a second step, in a separate reaction, sodium borohydride. What do you think the major product of this reaction is going to be? The end product will be an alcohol. The alkene will be converted into an OH hydroxy group. And the regiochemistry is more common to addition. That is, we're going to add the OH to the part of the double bond that's more substituted. That is the secondary carbon as opposed to the primary carbon. We're going to add it to the carbon that has less hydrogen atoms. So this is the major product. But now, what about the mechanism? How does it work? How can we go from this alkene to that alcohol? Well, let's see. Let's find out. So here is the original alkene. And then we have mercuric acetate. It has two acetate groups. By the way, OAC, this is the structure of OAC. It's basically an acetate ion. And in the structure, it's bonded to mercury. So for those of you who are wondering what exactly that is. Now, we also have a lone pair on the mercury atom. So how is this reaction going to work? Who is going to attack who? The double bond is going to attack the mercury atom. And as it does so, it's going to expel one of the acetate groups. But at the same time, the mercury is going to attack the double bond. It really happens all in one step, like a cyclic reaction. It happens pretty quickly. And so you're going to get this cyclic uh, mercurinium ion with one acetate group attached to it. And the mercury atom is going to have a positive formal charge. Now the two carbon atoms that are attached to the mercury atom, they also bear a partial positive charge. Now in the next step, water is going to attack one of these partially positive carbon atoms. The question is which one? Is it going to attack the secondary carbon or the primary carbon? We need to find out which one will produce a more stable transition state as water approaches. Because as water approaches, one of the bonds has to break. And to break a bond and to form a carbocation uh, temporarily, a carbocation that exists temporarily, we need something that can stabilize a positive charge. And it turns out that secondary carbon atoms can stabilize a positive charge better than a primary carbon atom. So therefore, it's going to be easier to break this bond as opposed to this one. Primary carbocations are not very stable. So water is going to attack the secondary carbon, producing a more stable transition state. And then this bond is going to break. Now let's draw the product of that result. So now the mercury atom is only attached to the primary carbon. And we have a protonated OH group on the secondary carbon. Now we need to use the other acetate ion that was expelled. So this acetate ion is a weak base. And it's going to grab a hydrogen. giving us our intermediate. So this is the product after the first step. It looks like this. That is after step one, where we added mercuric acetate and water. Now step two, we're going to use sodium borohydride. Now most books really don't talk about the mechanism for this reaction. It's not well understood. 
But what we do know is that the mercury acetate group is replaced by a hydrogen in a reduction reaction. And so you're not going to be tested on the mechanism for this process unless late in the future this mechanism becomes understood. I mean, unless more light is shined on it. But for now, you just need to know that the mercury acetate group is replaced by hydrogen. And so that's the general mechanism of the oxymercuration demercuration reaction. Now, test your knowledge. Let's say if we have this particular alkene, what's going to happen if we add mercury acetate and water? What's going to be the major product after this step? Feel free to pause the video and draw the product. So without adding sodium borohydride, you need to know that on a secondary carbon, we're going to get the mercury acetate group. Keep in mind, it's going to lose one acetate ion at this point. And on the tertiary carbon, the more substituted carbon, we're going to get the OH. Now, once we add sodium borohydride to it, all you need to do is replace this group with a hydrogen. Now, because we don't have to show a hydrogen for a line structure, we can simply write the final answer like this. If you want to, you can show the hydrogen, but you don't have to. So this is the answer. Now, what do you think the major product for this reaction will be? Will the OH group go on the primary carbon, the secondary carbon, or will it rearrange to the tertiary carbon? The oxymercuration demercuration reaction does not rearrange. It's going to go on the most substituted carbon that is part of the double bond. So that is this carbon, the secondary carbon that is part of that double bond. And so the final product will simply be an alcohol on that carbon. Now, what do you think the major product for this reaction will be? Instead of using water, let's use methanol. Now, if we had water, this would produce an alcohol. But since we have methanol, we're not going to get an alcohol. Instead, we're going to get an ether. We're going to get an OCH3 group. But notice that both carbons of the double bond are secondary. So the OCH3 group can go on either of these two carbons. In this case, we get a mixture of two different products. But now let's talk about the mechanism for that reaction. Feel free to work on it as well. So here we have the mercury acetate group. The double bond attacks mercury, expels the acetate group, and mercury also attacks the double bond at the same time. So just like before, we're going to get the mercurinium ion, and then methanol can attack either of the two secondary carbons that are attached to the mercury ion. So we just have to pick one. Let's go with this one. This bond is going to break. And so now here we have HgOAc. And on this carbon, we have an oxygen that's attached to a hydrogen and a methyl. Whenever oxygen has three bonds, it's going to have one lone pair and a plus charge. Now, in the next step, we're going to use the acetate ion that was removed to take off a hydrogen. 
It's a weak base, so it's attracted to the hydrogen that's attached to an oxygen with a plus charge. Whenever a hydrogen is attached to an O with a plus charge, that hydrogen is very acidic. And so now we have the product for the first reaction, that is after step one. Now in step two, once we add sodium borohydride, remember all you need to do is replace the mercury acetate group with a hydrogen. So this is the answer, which we can simply write it like this. Now keep in mind, you can also get the other product, but the mechanism will be the same. So that is it. So now you know the mechanism for the oxymercuration reaction and a demercuration reaction. That's where you use mercury acetate and water. And also the alkoxymercuration demercuration reaction. That's when you use uh, an alcohol to get an ether.